this lovely photo here um, of Ben Affleck as Batman next to Robert Pattinson as Batman. Now, let me just uh, give a little pretense for this. He is not 100% confirmed okay, as Batman yeah, yet. Uh, between him and the guy who plays Beast in the X-Men movies, uh, I'm more for Pattinson than I am for uh, Nicholas Holt, I think his name is. Yes, Holt, um, yeah. Um, so, I kind of want to give a little bit of context to this like first. Um, my issues with Pattinson, oddly enough, are not what I'm seeing on the internet. Um, it's it's all well and good to make fun of Twilight, but it's Twilight has nothing to do I mean, with my no, issues. No, that's not. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. That's that you can't um, judge him based on that. So before we talk about Robert Pattinson, I'd like to talk a little bit about Ben Affleck. Oh. Um, and we have Sad Affleck on the screen right now, um, and I, I think it kind of fits the the situation. So um, for one. In my opinion, now, everyone always says that usually the Batman you're introduced to, any character, doesn't have to be Batman, but the character, the version of that character you're introduced to first is your character. So, like, by saying that... It would have been Adam West in my case, and I don't think that it would have been the, <laughs> the second 1940s Batman serial Batman. Um, well, not, I no, mean, not, not really, <laughs> though, because, yes, I was also introduced to Adam West first, technically, but Michael Keaton was the media Batman right, yeah. when I was a little kid. And I love Michael Keaton as Batman. I do. Uh, but I was incredibly excited when Christian Bale got cast. And in my personal opinion, Ben Affleck was the best Batman. I think he was like Clooney, dealt a very bad yeah. script. Multiple times. <laughs> and multiple times. But um, to kind of go back through, because, you know, I... I would have liked to have seen his Batman. To talk about, we almost could have, uh, to talk about piecing together the puzzle of, of an entertainment story. Right. So Affleck um, has no association with the role, but the world kind of, if you know Ben Affleck in, in entertainment, you probably know that Ben Affleck is a Batman addict. No, he's a comic book geek. Yeah. Total comic book geek. That's why he was there. Loves Batman with a passion. Has a grandfather clock that you need to time to the time of the Wayne family murder to get into his gym. <laughs> yeah, I want it. Um, if I had all the money in the world, I would probably do that too. If my parents were dead. <laughs> so Affleck, you know, massive fan of the material. Uh, Man of Steel goes into theaters by Zack Snyder. Does well, but is divisive. Like every Superman film since Christopher Reeves. Yeah, um, since the first two. Since the first two. Yeah. Everybody forgets the, you know, the others were not so great. Yeah. Um, so Man of Steel comes out and it's supposed to launch the DC cinematic universe, kind of like Green Lantern was supposed to, and then failed again, not to the fault of Ryan Reynolds, but whatever reason. So Henry Cavill Superman, I thought was actually really good. Um, a lot of people give that movie a lot of grief for the fact that, you know, they destroy Metropolis and Superman kills Zod. Well, for one Frank, we have talked about how a Superman movie needed to be an entire city's destruction right, and these two titans. Because, like, Reeves' as Superman, there was never any, like, real showing of him using his abilities. Yeah. Brandon, um, for, that's now on Legends of Tomorrow, no. uh, he sure as hell never really showed us what he could do with well, those I mean, abilities. Well, I mean, well, I mean like, the thing... The thing I'm going to just go on on the side because I'm actually one of the few people who like Superman Returns. Um, I've never Bold been... statement. Okay. Ouch. I, I've, never, <laughs> I've never really been of the idea that... I've never been fond of the idea that the only way to challenge Superman is by sheer strength. The idea of challenging Superman on a philosophical level and I'd like, like an emotional core to challenge Superman is usually what works the best. And there are so many great Justice League episodes of the cartoon show where sure, Superman, where Superman sure. is challenged. So, I mean, you have a... But you know, for Superman Returns, hang on. Hang question. on. You have Superman coming back from, like, a five-year absence. Lois Lane's moved on. He's engaged. To Lex Luthor us. Lex Luthor gets out of prison because Superman wasn't there. And, you know, no one cares about Superman. So now he has to kind of find his place in the universe. And the most Superman moment... In any of the Superman movies, is Superman lifting that kryptonite island out of the ocean and throwing it into the sun before he collapses back to the earth? Hello, and Dr. that's so great. But anyways, <laughs> Man of Steel, yeah, we get a lot of his, we got uh, his brute strength, 
we get a lot of like Superman showing off the strength, but we don't get a I, core as Superman. I agree with the with your sensibility that it should be a philosophical challenge. However, I think somewhere in the movie, probably at the three quarter mark, there needs to be the mass destruction scene because he's an alien and it's an alien invasion movie and it sure. it's, and in the end it's a summer blockbuster and it's a summer blockbuster. This is a superpowered being capable of more than any other superhero on the face I mean, you know, of, of the, pop the, culture. The objection, that I, I mean, the objection that I have with that is the fact that you know Superman has a very specific moral set. So Superman is not going to just arbitrarily punch shit through buildings. Well, that was something I did not like about what they did in Man of Steel. Is that like you know Kevin Costner is like, no, hide away your powers, you know, do nothing with it. And then what's her name who plays his mom? has the that dialogue part where she's like you know be everything or be none of it you owe them nothing i'm paraphrasing but you know it's like that's not what superman's mom should say but anyway man of steel it left the audience divided yeah so right but i'm, I'm glad then that dawn of justice addressed that a little bit addressed the destruction and the the problem with superman it, it, it um, all seemed arbitrary so superman. batman v superman though was a response to that right. because WB seemed to have been a little worried about making a Man of Steel 2. Yeah. So what do you do when you're not sure it's going to work? You put Batman in it. At least Strike. you did it then. Strike the signal. So Ben Affleck gets signed to a three-picture deal, right? And um, the idea being that He's going to get his own standalone Batman movie, and he's going to direct. Before that was even announced, everyone was talking that, about Ben Affleck directing. That was the only reason why I was sold on Affleck being Batman. Because, you know, I think Affleck's a pretty solid actor. But when they announced him as Batman, I had just seen The Town for the first time. Okay. And the extended director's cut, the, the, the downbeat ending, that's like three hours long. And it's one of the greatest fucking movies of like the last ten years. Like, it's just such a well-written, well-acted, well I think Affleck is an incredibly good director. Um, yeah, he's, so he's the, the, the idea of giving Affleck the opportunity to write and direct and star in his own Batman film based on his previous directorial work was the most tantalizing aspect of that whole thing. So, Affleck gets cast as Batman for Batman v Superman. And we've seen Hollywood do this deal a million times. You do one for us. We do one for you. So in my mind, Affleck took that as, I do BVS yeah. for you. I get to do Batman for me. Yeah. Only Snyder got let... He, I feel like WB always makes this mistake. Because Tim Burton goes in and does Batman. Big box office smash. Then they give him free reign. He makes Batman Returns. A movie I actually very much enjoy. But it's not a Batman movie. Then, Joel Schumacher comes in. Batman Forever is a smash hit. It, it, so, it made so money. It so made was, money. So was Batman Returns. I think that, that, that it's necessary. It didn't make um, as much, but it was still a success. But then, Schumacher gets free reign, and we get Batman and Robin. Now, did that not make money, though? Batman, no, Batman and Robin didn't Batman do well. Batman and Robin was, in a, comparison. was a critical flop, but... Batman, Batman and Robin is interesting. And Schwarzenegger's bill was quite high. Batman and Batman and Robin sure. wasn't wasn't Schumacher given free reign. Batman and Robin was the studio mandated film. They wanted the action figures. They wanted toys, toys, uh, toys. If, if you if you watch the the documentary on the Batman and Robin DVD that came out a couple years ago, they go into all of that in detail. Um, um but but yes, Nolan comes in. He's going to do a trilogy. Batman Begins. <coughs> Pretty pushy by the studio. Um, like, I know he did not want Rachel Dawes as a character when they made Batman Begins, but the studio wanted a love interest. Harvey Dent was supposed to be in that first movie. Um, as, like, childhood friend of Bruce, kind of like they did in the animated series. Yeah. Uh, which would have been great as character build for Dark Knight. Then we get Dark Knight. Then Heath Ledger dies. Nolan didn't want to do number three. The whole movie stinks of Nolan didn't want to do number three. Um, and number three suffered. It again. I don't think Rises is a Batman movie. I think Rises. He punks suffered. out and goes off to Italy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but I mean, like those are character beats established in in Dark Knight, where like the, like it, it it becomes obvious that the only reason why he's Batman is so he can get he can get the girl, and once he yeah. gets the girl, he's he's willing willing to, to leave it all. 
So now Man of Steel, which critically divisive, but studio gives him Batman v Superman for Snyder. Yeah. And they give him free reign for most of the movie. And I kind of get the feeling because we, I remember I was in a mall and I was on the phone with you. <laughs> and it was when they had announced Chris Terrio brought in to rewrite. We all know he's Ben Affleck's writer. Yeah, he's Affleck's. So that was Affleck being like, oh my god, this is going to be a disaster. We need to save I, this I, movie. I do remember that I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, even when you look at the, the end product, Warner Brothers backtracks, they cut the movie. I mean, they cut the movie, but then they still give him Justice League. Yeah. So Affleck goes and gets attached to Suicide Squad. Well, I mean, even with does Justice his cameo. Even the studio the, butchers it. Even with Justice was, League, his they, start, they, awesome. started, they, yeah. started, they started filming Justice League the week BVS opens. Right. So, so there was no... No critical response yet. But you're not going to tell me the studio didn't see the dailies. Dailies or whatever. I mean, once you see the final product... I mean, I mean, you have to take into consideration to a degree that the, direct, that the theatrical cut of BVS is not a good movie. I, I feel like, the, I always felt like there was a good cut in there somewhere. The BBS. BBS director's cuts a pretty competently made movie. All of the plot points make sense. Everything kind of goes in the direction that it establishes. You know, the, the There's elements in there, standing. though, that, that you could totally see that Snyder took things too far. Yeah, to totally I have no problem with Batman vs. Superman because I'm not opposed to a dark superhero movie. You know, especially compared to what Marvel was dishing out. Mm -hmm. Where it's it's the same totally similar thing over and over and over again. Um, my uh, my my issue with BVS is just that um, you know the portrayal of the characters made no sense. Um, but yeah. So I, I just I guess bottom line is I I think that Affleck um, got totally screwed in his deal. Totally. Then got stuck with Justice League where they shifted director midway. And lo and behold, his three movie deal is over, and he never got to make Batman. Well, I mean, it, it, plus his alcohol problems. You take into consideration, I mean, you know, his, you know, his his addiction problem was notwithstanding. I mean, the fact that the first movie that he was in, and was a financial disaster, then Suicide Squad, the studio took the film, chopped it to bits, it was a financial disaster, and then Justice League gets. Practically like 95% of the movies refilmed by someone totally different, very hastily, and it was a decent movie, but a disaster. And all the while, the studio is trying to tell Affleck that you have to have a Batman movie in the can by 2021. And Affleck had said many times that he has no interest in reverse engineering a movie. He has no interest in working, working from a release date to the script. Right. Um... And, you know, his, you know, his whole thing, uh, we couldn't crack it, probably has an air of truth to it and that he couldn't crack it in the time frame that he was constantly being given. I think he just had a very high bar that he put on himself. Yeah. And wasn't getting Because everyone that saw his script, or what he had of a script, and the storyboard artist came forward saying everything looked phenomenal and it yeah. could have been one of the better Batman movies that was made. I know Deathstroke was the villain and it was supposed to be like an Arkham infiltration story. Yeah. Um, but so Affleck gone and now Robert Pattinson, uh, we won't spend too much time on this, but, um, I actually do have faith that he could actually probably be a very good actor, but I think we have to change our expectations to more of a Keaton-esque Batman because he's a small dude. He's not going to bulk up to Affleck size. Um, they're still calling this a prequel. How in the hell are they ever going to sell that he becomes Ben Affleck? Uh, yeah, at this point, um, for, for me, that's a disbelief. For, for me, that's a rumor until you know otherwise confirmed. I don't think they should. They're just going to convolute their cinematic universe by trying to tie everything together. Um, I believe he is currently a lead in an upcoming Nolan movie. He is, um, and that's probably how he got front run to this role. I mean. The thing with Batman is like once Mr. Mom has been cast as Batman, all bets are off. Like it's just wait and see what happens. Um, you know, Batman doesn't need to be Affleck size as far as bulk goes, because Batman can't be a ninja and be the super athletic super dude, but not be able to scratch his own head. So I mean Well that's having, why I, I liked Bale's size. I thought Christian yeah, so Bale had so the perfect having, having, I, I'm physical sure talent. Pattinson can yeah. bulk up to the size that he needs to be to be athletic to do all the things that Batman can do. 
I've got total faith in Matt Reeves. Um, if you've seen Let Me In or even you know his Planet of the Apes movies, the guy can do blockbuster stories while maintaining heart and emotion, which right. is what a lot of these movies lack. Um, I want to see Pattinson's face with a little meat on it. Yeah. Because he has the weirdest shaped head. Yeah. It's and I, jawline, though. I think his jawline sucks. He's got this face that's like blur. Like he, he, he has the square jaw. So. Yeah, but the rest of his head, the bat suit cowl is going to be like square jaw, and then it's going to be like blur. He's got like an alien head. I'll figure it out, yeah. Like, yeah, like, like some of the greatest make, makeup, special effects, and costume design. Yeah, the, the costume Listen, could be They a would not shit. give the role of Batman to David Duchovny when they were making Batman and Robin because they didn't like the way his nose looked in the cowl. I can't see David Duchovny as Batman one way or the other, so it doesn't really make a difference. That would be pretty Sunflower funny. seeds, yeah, That would be funny. Um, so. Yeah, the cow should have how it looks on the actor needs to have a little bit, little bit. I'll figure something out. Um, speaking of, I actually quite like the bat suit, even though it's just a statue of in Batwoman. They figure out for for the Pattinson movie. I hope they just give him some something that riffs on the Snyder outfit. Everyone had been complaining up to that point that you can't give a comic book accurate bat suit on screen. It's gonna look too stupid. And then Snyder fucking does it, and it looked great. And then you watch the, you see the costume in Gotham. You see the costume in the Batwoman trailer. And it's like, somehow they just figure out a way to overcomplicate it. Like, it's not hard. They don't even screw up Superman's outfit as much as they screw up Batman's. It's so simple. I think they're going to go it's back so to straight black. I'm okay with straight black, but I mean, <clears throat> don't do the Affleck outfit. Something something between the Begins outfit and the, maybe the Batman Returns costume would be pretty cool. But don't overcomplicate it. He's Batman. All you got to do is just say it's some sort of... Kevlar by weave thing. Just have Morgan Freeman say something really cool and establish the science. At the end of the day, despite all the cool things that Batman Begins Batsuit could do, it was still a rubber outfit. But you buy the oh. science behind it because it's told. You're told that there, there, there's something to it. So I mean, as as far as our topics of today and overthinking and overcomplicating, I I think we overcomplicated that topic quite a bit. <laughs> we've been com- we 